Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video. And listen, we've got a big topic today that I want to get off my chest and it is Billy Gilmore. Now, um, a, a source close to the Gilmore family says there's a little bit of an ultimatum or potentially at least a decision in his head has been made as the player in the family that either he needs to be a part of the plans. This is from David Eager. Um, either he needs to be part of the plans next season in the team or he needs to leave. Another loan is simply not what he is ideally looking for. And I completely understand that. Listen, he's 20 years old, 100%. But I think everybody could see that Norwich loan was a big risk. Daniel Falk, you know, German manager. There's a connection there with Tuchel. We used to work under him at Dortmund. Let's see how it goes. If it works, if it works, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Similar to Ampadu. But Gilmore's not playing these games. He's not trying to get lost in this loan system, you know, after playing for Scotland. Man of the match performance at Wembley. After being hailed by Roy Keane all those days back in against Everton two years ago against Liverpool. Um, you know, he had some top, top performances in a Chelsea shirt. And he's the kind of player... Similar to me, like a Phil Foden, although different positions where they actually do better around top players. And not every single player is going to do well when you send them down to the dumps and, and tell them to get, you know, up amongst the rubbish and expect them to come out still clean. It's not possible with Billy Gilmore because the football and the style that he plays, he wants to play with possession. He wants to play with the ball around other good technical players and then he can link up and, and, and really lead um, the build up play. Now, the reason why I have been lauding about this player for the last two years um, really, and, and, and for me, I see him as the ultimate Jorginho replacement is because of the responsibility he wants on the ball. And I think it's absolutely key that Chelsea try and keep this type of midfielder. We've got a lot of other profiles that are very similar, but we don't have the next generation of player that wants to help in that build-up play phase um, as much as Billy Gilmore does. He takes so much responsibility. He's a leader. Go back and watch the clips of him in the Chelsea shirt all those years ago. Go back and watch the Everton performance at home in the league, the 4-0 win where he anchored the midfield. Um, and, and also go look at the Liverpool Cup game, 2-0 win, where he anchored the midfield. These are the two performances, along with Scotland, along with other Chelsea performances, but these are the two massive, big man-of-the-match performances where I saw a player that was special, a player that was a teenager, taking responsibility, pointing other players into what position he wants them to receive and to give the ball, organising our build-up play. And yes, people will say he's very small and potentially will get bullied. But again, he's Scottish. I've been, I've been speaking to Pat Neverland. I've been listening to commentary, listening to Roy Keane speak. The guy is aggressive. He may not be big, but he's got a big heart. And I know it's cliche and it's cringe, but it's true with this guy because he does still get amongst the tackles. He's very mobile, more mobile than Jorginho. I actually think he's got a little bit more potential because of that mobility that he has. And he gets stuck in. There's no Scottish player that doesn't. It's just, a, it's just a known fact. There's no Scottish player that doesn't get stuck into their challenges. Yeah, it's just the way that they play football up in the SPL. You know, when you're seeing players like Andrew Robertson come down, Kieran Tierney, if he wasn't so injury prone, Van Dyke. you know, I know he's Dutch, but he, he was obviously playing in Scotland for quite some time. Gilmore, when he came from Rangers. These players, Scott Brown, you know, at Celtic, these players get stuck in. There ain't many Scottish players that don't. And I really just feel like if we allow this player to leave, we are really going to regret it. I know statistically people will say, oh, it was a bad loan at Norwich. But may I remind you, not every single time someone goes out on loan, they're going to flourish. Sometimes the manager doesn't choose them, which is what happened here early this season with Daniel Falk. Didn't really choose Billy Gilmore too much, you know. And again, Norwich have been relegated. Just goes to show. It's not like they got it right. It's not like as if their team was better without Billy. Many a time. And I, I'm really angry that Chelsea sent him out there and almost didn't bring him back. I'm not sure if there was a clause. He was getting booed and, and cussed out by Norwich fans constantly. Getting the, a 20-year-old getting a massive portion of the blame for a team that were really just god-awful all season. And really, you know, they got relegated for a reason. They weren't a very good team. And instead of building around somebody like this and trying to play with the ball, they decided to go to a very negative way. And of course, Daniel Falk ended up getting sacked. Dean Smith comes in. He does start to get more game time. But like I said, the guy is still, in my opinion, a very, very promising, important talent that we have to keep of, keep a hold of. Now, Tuchel was hinted at staying at the 3-4-3. Three, three. And I know it's flexible, it's fluid. He sometimes does switch to a four in-game. But say he is starting predominantly with the three at the back and the pivot. For me, Billy Gilmore, if you are sticking with that formation, is more important to keep than, than Gallagher. Because Gallagher this season, we're going we're gonna to speak and compare the two. And, and, and because I know Gallagher's getting a lot of hype and, and rightly so. Obviously, he's got eight goals in the Premier League, three assists. But we need to look at why these players got the statistics they did. So many times as Chelsea 
fans and, and Chelsea's recruitment. We see a player who's gone out alone or we buy a player based on their statistics. Oh, they've got eight goals, three assists. He's ready. Oh, he got, you know, this many goals for Leipzig in the Bundesliga. He's ready. But we don't look at how they got their goals. We don't look at how they got their assists. We don't look at whether that translates into our team, whether we can then go forward and say we can replicate those goals and assists in our team. We just see goals and assists in a completely different formation, in a completely different style, which is Crystal Palace. And we think that it's just going to be replicated in our team who have way more possession come up against way more low blocks and just play like I said a different system so it, for me that doesn't make sense now this is why I've, I've hinted at times that a free man midfield would make sense it would get the best out of Loftus-Cheek who you've seen in a pivot isn't responsible enough to remain you know rigid and defensive it's just not his game if you want to see the best of Loftus-Cheek you give him freedom the same applies to Gallagher you know yes he's definitely played that pivot at West Brom he he gets his tackles and interceptions in just as Billy does but what have we seen this season what is everybody raving about the goals the assists now Gallagher this season at Palace has been playing in the number 10 or the right hand side of the midfield three he's been the instigator in the press and that's why it was so key for Chelsea to not have him play against us in the Crystal Palace game uh, in the FA Cup semi-final because this guy he's all about counter press very high energy octane and the guy covers the space if you look at his heat map he's covered the whole pitch for Palace this season you know, but he gets his goals, he gets his assists, he's a final third, he's he's really improved this season. That's where you would want him as a Chelsea player, you know, going into next season. But like I said, where is he going to play in that 3-4-3? Three, three? Is he going to play in the front three? For me, he would have to. He would have to play in Mason's role. It would be, be between him and Mason for that for that third attacking forward line spot. I don't want to see him in the pivot. If you look at the metrics, if you look at the statistics, Billy's much better at progressive passing. Billy's much better at switches. Billy's much better at build-up play and getting involved in the initial stages. Yes, because he actually plays deeper for Norwich, but also just because he's better at it and he's technically in possession a better footballer than, than Gallagher. When I speak to Palace fans, they talk about Gallagher's he's been great for us, but he's not that great at passing. He's not that great, you know, in terms of progressing the ball. That's not his thing. He's more of the, you know, he's been impactful in the final third. I went to the Amex Stadium and, and you know, he didn't exactly play very well, but he got his goal late on in that, in that derby. I, I have seen in Gallagher the big games he does team, seem to do amazingly well statistically as well. You know, at the Etihad against Man City, great performance. Against Tottenham twice, great performances. Against West Ham, why is that? Potentially because, like we've seen with our, our own players that are not great in possession, like your Werners, you know, they're better when we don't have so much possession and teams come on to us, which is what would happen with Palace in those games. And then there are spaces for those counter presses, for those transitions, for that space in the final third. But when we come against low blocks, we need someone like Gilmore more than, than a Gallagher, in my opinion, because we need someone who can unlock. Now, it would be brilliant to keep both. And I hope we're able to switch between different formations. But... People will write off Gilmore and hype up Gallagher like as if they're two completely, you know, different ends of the spectrum in terms of quality. And that's just simply not true, in my opinion. You know, like I said, Gilmore, yes, didn't have a great season in, in, in that regard. However, you do need to look at just what this team actually needs also in that pivot, especially in this formation. And they need someone who's willing to do what Jorginho, you know, does in, in respect and more. Every time Jorginho hasn't been in the team, the midfield at times is looking imbalanced. Unless it's Cover and Kante in a pivot against Liverpool, it's pretty imbalanced. And that is because people don't want to pick up the ball in the centre centre of the pitch and do the build-up play and link up with the defenders. You know, we saw Kante against Arsenal, isolated, left on his own to die by Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Mason Mount. We saw, you know, the, the performance against Brentford. Ruben Loftus-Cheek tried in that role, left on his own to die. Again, not a player that wants to sit, not a player that wants to, to pick up the ball in those deeper areas constantly and, and, and make those switches and make those passes and, and keep things ticking over. And like I said, Gilmore is better at the progressive passing and, and centrally we need to keep that. Against Arsenal, it was a U-shape. So for me... Like I said, when you when you look at what he's done in the Chelsea shirt, when you go back and watch Gilmore's performances in the Chelsea shirt, he has been pretty damn good. He's shit on anything Saul's done this season. And yes, the loan hasn't worked out. But we sometimes need to look at ourselves and say, what actually suits us? And, and we need to cater to what suits us, not just statistics and not just metrics, but, but not actually looking at how that comes to fruition, why that comes to fruition. I've, I've, listen, when it comes to Gallagher and, 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 and Gilmore, I've looked at the statistics. Um, when it comes to, you know, 
Gilmore, he's he's outshining Gallagher in terms of obviously build up play and participation, but that is expected because he is deeper and like I said, he's better at that. Um, in terms of you know turnover avoidance as well, you know he's got eleven on 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 um, on on F brief and and Gallagher scores a twenty six. But in terms of progressive carries, progressive passes, um, you know uh, passes into the final third as well, um, and carries into the final third and switches and touches in the middle third. Gilmore is outshining Gallagher in all these metrics this season at Norwich compared to Crystal Palace. And like I said, when you're looking at Gallagher, his best statistics are his assists, are his goals, um, you know, are, are the fact that his dribbles completed as well. Not progressive carries, but dribbles completed in tight spaces. He's getting away from people. Um, and, and like I said, that counter press, that energy. If Chelsea want to be a counter pressing team, Gallagher's perfect. I, I think Gallagher's kind of the mould between the Kante and the Mason Mount. You know, he can get the goals and assists, but he's also got the discipline to get those tackles and interceptions as well. And he's got the energy of a Kante. I call him the English Kante. But if Chelsea want to solve their creativity issue, their, their progressive passing through the centre of the pitch, up against low blocks, you need a player like Gallagher. He's going to impact against those low blocks more than Gallagher, Gallagher will. So for me, you know, if I'm telling you who I'm more excited about, in terms of profile that we don't have from a young player, because I feel like Ruben, you know, Mount, they're, they're all players that want to go box to box. They want to get in that final third. They want to get the goals from midfield. Even Kante is also a, a box to box or a ball winning box to box. It's a different type of player. I, Gap Gilmore is the guy for me that we have to keep, you know, we absolutely have to keep. You want to keep both, but there is a cluster of, 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 of players of, of a similar profile in that position. Gilmore, if Jorginho is potentially going, Chelsea, you have to keep Gilmore. You have to. You, 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 I've never seen clearer talent, honestly, when, when he's been in a Chelsea shirt. And if we fumble this bag and let this boy leave, honestly, we, we, we don't, we, we, I don't think we're watching football, people. Really. We, I really don't think we're watching football. I'm so deadly serious about this. So that's my rant on, on Gilmore over, you know, hopefully there's space for the both of them. I'm pretty sure there's definitely going to be Gallagher in the team because Tuchel seems to really love him and, and, and want him in the team next season. And he's definitely proved he should be given a chance. Um, and, and hopefully we'll see more sides to his game that we're not seeing or we'll actually just utilise him exactly how he needs to be utilised. But I need... I need, we need to keep Gilmore people. Seriously, it's, it's, it's beyond a joke. Um, especially if Jorginho is leaving. I cannot tell you how much our build-up play will suffer if we don't keep a Gilmore after letting go of Jorginho. Especially with all these DMs going to Real Madrid and Chiromeni. You know, Kamara going to Villa. Um, you know, and there's going to be more if we don't get this sale over the line. Now, speaking of the sale, let's pivot to that. £200 um, million pound transfer fee, apparently, or transfer kitty, but after sales. So... Listen, I, this is this is this is a fluid number. We don't know exactly what we're going to spend. We don't know exactly what's going to come in. So there's no point getting too worked up, up, up about it. Also, on top of that, um, this is a, a situation where we don't really want to make our, our business public anyway in terms of what we will spend. So I'm, I'm going to just hope that that's just a little bit of a, a, a you know, a tactical move from from our, ourselves. And we're not just being so bait and, and obvious. It's ridiculous. Um, but like I said, do we need the money from the player sales? I don't know. I don't know how much they actually have in terms of what they have to give to this transfer window, but we do need to get rid of it for wage bill um, and for space. You know, money aside, Chelsea have always needed to get rid of players for space and for wage bill because the wage bill is, like I said, a little bit stupid compared to where we actually play and finish in, in the league. And also, um, there, there, there is no space. You know, we have, I've, I've spoken about it. We have like four or five left backs on the books. Um, maybe, maybe even six if I count them all up. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to waste your time. You know, we have plenty, plenty, a plenty of attackers and there's no real space to bring in a new one until you sell another one. Um, loads of midfielders, when you actually add them all up and, and Ampadu and Gilmore will come back into the equation. Again, the, the, the FIFA rules, obviously, with the loan system, they're going to be cut down. I'm hoping that will push us to, to actually move a lot more players on. But there is just so many players in this squad. We have got to cut the numbers down, regardless of whether we have a lot of money or not, because there is simply no space. We can't have, you know, players earning 100k a week in the under-23s kicking ball. They need to leave. That is not that is not smart. That is not sustainable. Um, and, and yes, like I said, if we're going to move in this direction of being wise in recruitment... It's also about who we sell as well. So that's absolutely massive and clear. But like I said, people, my, the main bulk of my video was was, was on Gilmore. Um, we got to keep this guy. He's he's a, he's a very, very talented player. Um, and, and, it, and it really does depend on what formation Tuchel is going to mainly use. If he moves to a three, like I said, that's going to suit Gallagher perfectly. I still think Gilmore will, will, will do very well in that system as well as a six or an eight, kind of like a, a half breed of the two, like a Kante, but just better on the ball. Um, and then, you know, 
if we play the pivot for me, you know, he's got to be involved in some capacity because that is literally where he's been playing for Norwich this season in the pivot. Whereas Gallagher's been playing in the 10 and in a box to box right side of a midfield three and, and getting very far forward at that um, to start the press. Uh, so, and, and when it comes to Ampadu, listen, is that good loan, uh, good loan, uh, another midfielder, if you want to start this debate of the young midfielders in the comments, who would you, who are you most excited about? Because I, you know, I think we'd like to keep them all, but it's just not realistic, which is why I'm bringing up this conversation. Ampadu, um, listen, he's, he's like a, a jack of all trades. He, he can play in the back three, left side or right side. He can play in the DM. He's played loads of different positions. If we are struggling to recruit a DM, if we are struggling to recruit a centre back, this is not a bad player to keep considering the loan he had as well. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, let me know what you think of, you know, Gilmore, Gallagher and Ampadu, you know, these three players. I know I spoke about mostly the first two, how they fit in and, 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 and your concerns or your biggest um, questions. I'll be in the comments replying or your excitement. You know, how, how excited are you? Let me know in the comments. Smash up the icons in a bit, people. Peace.